Alrighty, friends, we are out here in Torrance, yeah. California for a screening of Transformers 1. As always, oh, we're going to go watch the screening, head back to the couch, and do our deep dive. So I will see you guys in just a little bit. Uh, first, I just want to thank Paramount for letting us do this, but I want to thank all of you guys for coming. I know for a lot of you, it's a long travel to get over here. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I know for all of us creators, so there's a lot of uncertainty in social media. Content's changing, the way people consume content is changing, algorithms are changing. But there's been one constant blessing through social media that has happened for Daniel and I that I never thought would come from that. And that is finding our closest friends and being a part of this amazing community tonight. So we're so thankful for you guys and we hope everyone has a great time. The goal tonight is everyone have a great time, eat lots of great food, and let's enjoy this movie. So thank you guys so much. Alrighty, my Autobots, my Decepticons. Let's talk about the greatest movie of 2024, Transformers 1. I can say with absolute certainty that I absolutely loved this film. I'm gonna do my best to do a non-spoiler for the first like two minutes and then spend the next X amount of time really deep diving on the aspects of why I think this is gonna be one of the greatest films of 2024, if not one of the greatest animated features that has been made in quite some time. This was directed by Josh Cooley, who also directed Toy Story 4. He directed uh, the short Riley's First Date, I believe it was called. He did win an Academy Award, an Oscar, for his directorial debut, and that was right out the gate. First directorial debut and wins an Oscar for Toy Story 4. That is in, its, in and of itself absolutely incredible, but he really put everything he had in this film from the cinematography to the storyline to the history and really putting the backstories of these characters into this new world. I think it really paid homage to the stories of the Autobots, the Decepticons, the Transformers that we all know and love, but brought it into this modern age and into a new light that I think both new audiences and older audiences who love these characters will truly appreciate this film. Still staying on the non-spoiler, I think that the voice actors, <laughs> I think a lot of the voice actors did a really great job. I will say uh, just non-spoiler, there are a few voice actors who you could easily hear them going in and out, but overall I think that this film really brought a lot to it. And I think it brings a lot to this new universe that Hasbro is trying to build. This is the first film out of the gate and I gotta say, as their first big film Hasbro, they really did it. And I truly think that this is a film that is going to build upon this new gaming multiverse in a wonderful and positive way. Uh, from start to finish to the cinematography to the editing, God, if this doesn't win an award for the editing, there were times in this film where I thought there was a mistake happening and it seamlessly from that mistake transitioned into a brand new scene. They played with elements of automobiles and glitches and mistakes. They made so many quote unquote mistakes, but flipped it in a way that it worked. And I, I don't know how to express that in any other way, but it just, they were very playful in this movie. And while it still is a child's film, it's a, it's a children's film, every single person, no matter how old you are, can find yourself in this film. Of course, Bumblebee will still stay the standout for everyone and, and always. Um, but it just was a really fun and involved film. It, it brought so many elements of, of old school Autobots and it played with the storylines in a very personal way and it played with them in a, in a new and immersive way. And that's all I'm gonna say. I, I can't stay on the non-spoiler because I really wanna get into what this film is and, and talk about more of the spoiler side aspect of this film. So that was my non-spoiler review. If that's enough, I will say this is going to win all of the awards. It's going to win awards for a uh, story. It'll win award. It'll win the animation of the year. I don't know what other animation is going to even come close to this film. It will win best animation at the Oscars. It might even win best director if it comes up to that. I just, this movie has everything that you need to have a complete storyline. It's got the heart, it's got the the brotherly love, it's got that that loss and longing, it's got the hope for something better for yourself or your community. It has so many elements where you know you know the story of Megatron and 
Optimus Prime, but you don't really know. And what I really love is they didn't rely on the prior storylines. They didn't rely on the live action versions of this. They didn't even rely on the animated series. They said, we know this story, but let's really dive into what we think this story could be. And it was epic. It was a beautiful retelling of this story, but still, again, playing homage to those classic characters that we know and love. And I felt like every time a new Autobot came on screen, you knew who they were, but they played around with their backstories and they played around with the elements that made them memorable in a brand new way, which is so hard to do with a story that has been regurgitated, recycled, resold so many different times and different ways. But anyway, let me get into the quick spoiler version. So go watch that. It will win a lot of awards. Go, go, go. Now let's get into the spoiler side of things. Josh did it, okay? He did everything to make this an amazing and fantastic movie. Uh, right off the bat, the relationship between, and I forget their actual, their pre-prime names, because the big thing about the old, sorry, just I'm everywhere right now because I really want to explain how wonderful this is. The big thing about the Michael Bay live action films was that they were always looking for an all spark. It was the all spark that was the big thing that was going to save their planet. But in this film, it's completely different. They're mining for what is the core essence of the planet because that's what keeps them alive. It's this, this essence of this planet. And there was a big war that happened. There were aliens that came in and there was a huge war. And the Primes, which are the prime Autobots, had to go to war had to fight and unfortunately not only did all the primes but one die off but they lost this the main prime of them all the prime of the primes had the central you know uh, what did they call it the core of leadership it was the core of leadership but not only did that core of leadership fuel the energon into the entire planet but it was the symbol of the nation of the of the city of the world of the world that they lived in and when they lost this war they lost that so now all the primes that exist because there are some autobots without a core in them so they're just smaller they're weaker they don't have a core and that's where we find megatron and optimus prime again those aren't their names when they're younger they have to build up into those characters but because they've lost that core, the thing that supplies all the energon throughout the city, they now have miners, which are the coreless beings. So even in that aspect, we've removed ourselves from this idea of the all spark. Now we're searching for this core of leadership that's going to refuel the population, that's going to give us back hope and honor. And it's going to, it's the one thing that was left behind by our champions of justice who gave themselves so that we could have a better life. It's just sad, and we find out that they're living layers into the planet. They aren't even allowed on the surface anymore because that's where all the bad guys are and the danger is. And we find out that they're living in a dystopian-styled world where the miners are working, you know, 22-hour shifts to mine for the rest of the population. And yes, they've built a nice little ecosystem, but they're unfulfilled and half of them don't or most of them don't even know that except for optimus prime who knows that there is more out there he's so built on on hope and it's so visceral you as an audience member immediately because again you know you know where he's gonna be and so you see him working and struggling and he's broken he's someone who's craving for more out of life something that everyone can identify with and it's just you as an audience member immediately feel attached to this journey and you see him with Megatron and they have this beautiful bond. It's a one for all bond that we see in a lot of shows nowadays where we're, it's, it's us against the world, you know, and they, I love that. You've got Optimist who truly is an optimist and you've got Megatron who's a little bit more gritty. He's, I go by the books. I am, I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want to be demoted even further, but you um, automatically see that no matter what they do, every little mistake will get them demoted further and further and further down into the sub-levels of the earth. And it's just sad. It's sad, the system that they've built up where the weak, you basically beat down the weak because it's easy. Uh, and I just, you know, the storyline is something that we can all identify with, this idea of wanting more out of our lives and trying and, and even trying and failing and failing either downwards or failing upwards, but this idea that we want more for ourselves. You know, we find Scarlett Johansson's character, we find uh, Bumblebee, who is the heart and soul of this 
film. And of course, it's Bumblebee. You know it and you love him. Eventually down, down the road, we find out that the one prime that survived the big war, obviously, and we knew this from the beginning, he was the bad guy. He ended up, uh, he made a deal with the aliens and helped kill off all of the primes so that he could be the Mac Daddy king of the sovereignty. You know, he's living like a king now. And this breaks Megatron. This breaks him to his core. This was something that he idolized. And we come to find out even further, Megatronius, where he got his namesake from, he was one of the primes. He was the biggest of the primes in the war. Um, when they all perished, the evil prime, the, the Mac Daddy King prime, took his core from his body and put it into his own so that he could be the new big powerful prime. So not only did Megatron's idol get killed off in a war by this a-hole, but he basically took his heart from him and put it into his own body. So his idol's heart was ripped out and put into the bad guy. And, and this is someone that Megatron, the baby Megatron, idolized. He was like, I, I work hard in the mines because this guy was our savior. He was the last sole survivor of this apocalypse. And it's just, you're watching this and you're like, this is a children's show? This is crazy. These adult themes are wonderful. And, and you just are absorbed in, in the deep complexity of this story. It is in, this is such a good movie. I cannot express that in any other way. This is a great, great story, great movie, great directing. And from start to finish, you feel the heart of this. And I wish this movie were marketed in every possible way more. I want to make sure that people go to see this film because it is going to be the film of the year, period. I can't express that enough. You see the, the betrayal. Just the last thing I'll say is I love the, the display of friendship to enemy and the mistrust along the way. And you slowly see Megatron's eyes going from this, this golden hue of optimism to this raging red of defiance and deception and anger. And that's really it. When you build your entire life thinking one way that if you dot your I's and you cross your T's, that you will move up in this world and you'll be appreciated and seen for the worth that you've given. And when you continue to do that, like Megatron has, and then you find out that everything you've ever worked for in your entire life was a lie. But even further, everything you've ever done in your entire life aided and abetted to the downfall of the entire society that you've tried your entire life to improve upon, it breaks you. And you can either go one of two directions. You can either go the route that Optimus Prime went and said, okay, well now it's our job, now that we know this truth, to get the truth out in the right way, or you do what Megatron does and did, and you say, to hell with all of that. I'm going to, and I quote, kill him. You go straight because he has destroyed everything you've ever done, and now he needs to pay for everything that he did. And to double down and make it worse, they find out that the bad prime, the king prime, actually took the cores from all of the miners. Because the big thing is, is all these Autobots are like, I, when I came online, I had no core. I was born into this position. Come to find out that before they were even turned online, King Prime took the cores out of them so that they could no longer transform. And they were immediately, upon turning online, upon their birth, forced into the mines. They knew nothing but work and slavery from the second that they got turned on. And that breaks Megatron but it also gives him a reason to have this vigor and this ire and this strength that none of his people shall ever be deceived again. And if anyone is going to be a deceiver, it's going to be him, hence the rise of the Decepticons. And I just think that that backstory is amazing and it's beautiful and something we didn't get from the live actions. This is a great film, that's all I'm gonna say. I can't express enough how freaking amazing this film is point blank period go watch it i and it's crazy because all of the other reviews i'm like ah to heck with this this is the worst i'm so critical of everything that's wrong about this film but the only negative critique i'm gonna have is god bless thor he did his best but we need an accent coach you needed an accent coach on there because there were so many times when he was slipping in and out of that australian accent and it was taking me out of it yes out of everything he i think was the weakest but he's also optimus prime so he can't be the weakest Alrighty, friends that's all I'm going to say on this film. Go watch it. That's that's a long review. Make sure you guys like, follow, subscribe. We've got a couple more films, a lot of films. We've got Agatha all along coming out. So we have a lot of things that we're going to be talking about in the month of September leading into October because it's spooky month. 
We got a lot of movies to watch. We got a lot of things to talk about. Like, follow, subscribe. Let me know in the comments whether or not you're excited about this film. What was your favorite Transformers film, by the way? Let me know in the comments about that too. And I will see you all for the next.